Hello and a very warm welcome to the first Real Home Show of 2020. Coming up, how to kickstart your dream extension project, the five gadgets that every pet owner needs, living room trends for the year ahead, we put toasted sandwich makers priced £90 to £20 to the test, plus we're giving away four shaggy rugs from Frith Rugs worth £250 each. If you've been umming and ahhing about extending your home for a while, then our brand new Extensions Made Easy series is here to help. Each episode, we're going to talk you through the different stages of adding an extension, starting with when it is and isn't worth extending. So, many of us want to extend our house, but we don't know where to start. So, over the next six episodes of The Real Home Show, we're going to break the process down into really nice to understand bite-sized chunks. So with that in mind, we've asked Nick Stockley from the leading architectural practice, Resi, to help us go through that process in detail and help people understand where to start. So without further ado, Nick, I think the first question that I'm interested in knowing really is, is actually why would you extend and, and what are the reasons behind it? So I think common scenarios really are that they need more space. Uh, they've got a growing family, they want to change how they live, they want to maximise the value in their property, they want to invest. Um, so there's lots of variables, I suppose, in terms of the decision-making process. Um, what we see a pattern in is that home owners want to create more space. They want to connect to the garden and they want to transform their living environment. So more modern homes aren't necessarily the ones that we'd want to extend, are they? So older homes tend to be a bit better suited towards extensions, perhaps? Um, a lot of older properties have more opportunity, they're more interesting, uh, they have bigger sites, they're not so closely connected to neighbouring properties, so that gives you more of a blank canvas to transform. Um, whether that's taking out walls or whether it's extending or, or connecting to the garden or redesigning the whole configuration, um, a lot of these are the deciding and determining factors, really. It's also true, isn't it, that not all homes are best served by an extension. Actually, a transformation might be better achieved through something like remodelling or changing the interior layout. So could you kind of let me know a little bit about how that process has come to and why people don't necessarily need to extend? Yeah, I, th I think the first thing we would do really is a, as an architect, um, when we're designing for our clients, um, what we do at Resi really is start to understand initially uh, what their brief is, what's their objective. Uh, generally people have a, an understanding of that and they, they can confirm why they want to do this. Then it's about dissecting and, and making sure we're utilising our experience, our professional expertise to guide them through the best ways to transform, whether it's reconfiguration of existing floor area, it's whether it's a combination of reconfiguration and a small extension, or in order for them to add the space and really transform how they live, it might be a bigger development. And a lot of that will come down to the existing building, the site, um, permitted development rights, which basically means you don't need planning permission to extend. There's opportunity to utilise that, which is set by the government and planning policy. Um, so we'll be looking at all of these kind of factors when determining whether we whether we'll design an extension or we reconfigure the existing space, and also budget. It's an, it's an important factor as well to consider. So Resi, as a practice, has done probably thousands of extension projects. You must have seen in your time some very common projects. What are the most common projects that people tend to do? So you get a lot of Victorian or terrace or semi-detached properties because that's the <coughs> excuse me mass, the housing stock we've got here in the UK. Um, so you get the typical side extensions or side and rear, or what we call a wraparound where you're connecting a side and rear extension just to create a much bigger open plan kitchen, dining, entertainment space. Um, connecting to the garden, bringing in daylight, transforming that kind of open plan living environment, creating an opportunity to save the family to engage as one. So that's a common development. Uh, obviously loft conversions, so we get roof spaces, voids, so which aren't utilised at the moment, they're more storage, so there's opportunities there to add a dormer or um, reconfigure by installing roof lights to get daylight in and, and create an additional footprint um, up in that void and, and wasted space basically. So they're the two kind of common uh, transformations which are generally dictated by the housing type that we are working on. So that's all the options considered and explored and hopefully for many people I think they'll agree an extension is the obvious solution. So make sure you join us next time when we'll be looking at that all important question, how much is an extension project going to cost and what value is it going to add? 
If you share your home with a four-legged friend, then here is our lovely tech expert, Verity, with the five gadgets that you need in your life. Who knew there was a pet camera that can throw treats? Join me afterwards for the living room trends that you need to know about. Now, be honest, do you prefer your pets to most people? Yep, me too. I'd do anything for my dogs, and that includes investing in tech to make sure they're safe, happy and healthy. Here are the five gadgets that I think every pet owner needs in their lives. Firstly, you need a robot vacuum cleaner, like the Neato Botvac D750 Connected Premium Pet Edition, which retails at around £400. While a robot vacuum cleaner won't replace a proper manual vacuum, they are brilliant for keeping on top of pet hair day to day. The Neato is the company's top pet focus model and features all the things that the company is famous for. Things like its D-shaped design for getting flush to walls and deep into corners and the ability to learn and memorise your home's floor plan. Plus the ability to draw no-go areas within the app, keeping it away from pet beds and pet bowls. It'll handle all types of flooring and comes with a specially designed brush for clearing up pet hair. It'll run for 120 minutes and take itself back to its dock for charging when it's needed. And there's even Alexa compatibility, so you can set it going with just your voice. Secondly, you'll need a connected camera. I rate the Nest Cam IQ Indoor, which is currently £119, and the Furbo, which retails at £129. Keeping an eye on your furry friend when you've nipped out is helpful, if just to make sure they're behaving themselves when you're not there. Any connected camera is great for this, allowing you to view a video stream of your room from your phone. But the Nest Cam IQ Indoor is particularly good, as it can tell the difference between people and pets. That means it can double up as a security camera, letting you know if it spots any humans, but turning a blind eye to your pets padding around the place. There's also two-way communication, so you can speak to your dog from afar and tell them to get off the sofa. For something that your pets will really love though, the Furbo is an HD pet camera that offers the same live video streaming and two-way communication, but it can even throw your pet a treat. In third place, invest in a combined pet tracker and activity monitor, like the Finster Duo Plus, which retails at £140. The Finster allows you to know where your pet is at at all times, giving you peace of mind in case they get off their lead during a walk or sneak out of a gate that's been left open. It'll give you real-time notifications as to their location and will even notify you immediately if a pet sneaks outside a virtual boundary that you've set up within the app, like your house, so you can catch up to them really quickly. The activity monitor gives you easy to digest stats as to how much rest and activity your dog has had that day, so you can be sure that their needs are being met. You can track up to three pets within the app too. In fourth, invest in the Sureflat Microchip Pet Door with Hub at £130. Having unwanted furry visitors in your house is the problem with standard cat flaps, but the Sureflat Microchip Pet Door stops that by reading your pet's existing microchip and only allowing access to your animals. The included hub connects the pet door to your phone, so you can keep track of when the door is activated from the app and check in on patterns to notice any change in behavior. You can even set up different permissions for different pets and lock the door from afar should you decide it's time for them to stay put. Finally, ensure your pet has fresh food even when you're away at dinner time with the Pet Kit Fresh Element Pet Food Dispenser, which retails at 140 pounds. It will mean that your pet doesn't have to wait past their meal time for their food, measuring out the amount you've preset perfectly. It can store up to six pounds of food with a silicone seal to keep it fresh. You can schedule the times you want the food to be delivered via the app, but it's also compatible with Alexa. So even when you are home, you can get the pet's food sorted hands-free while you juggle the dinner times of the rest of the household. So there you have it, the essential gadgets that every pet owner needs. Now, somebody just needs to invent a robot pooper scooper. For the very best prices on smart tech, make sure that you head to realhomes.com forward slash technology. Now, if you want an easy way to give your home a refresh, then your living room decor is a great place to start. Here's the lovely Cyan Astley from Morgus with the interior design trends that we'll be seeing everywhere in 2020. Join me afterwards for our toasted sandwich challenge. If you want to refresh your home, then updating your living room is one of the easiest and the most affordable places to start. You can completely change the feel of the room with new cushions and rugs or simply by painting the walls. Here are three of my favourite living room design trends for 2020 to inspire you. First up, 
warm up your greys. Now grey interiors have been around for a good few years now, but grey on grey on grey can be just too cold and clinical for most of us, especially here in the UK with our cooler northern light. But there's no need to start again. Simply layer in some warmer tones. Grey works wonderful with creams, buttery caramels and soft whites, especially when lots of texture is added. So we're thinking boucle cushions or textured throws, tweeds with fringing or giant knits. If you've invested in a pale grey sofa, worry not. It's the perfect backdrop to many new looks, including forest green, russ, soft pinks and many other pastels. Now our second trend is circles and arches. Yep, all those 80s arches we ripped out of doorways are back. I'm kidding about that, but this is a very strong trend for 2020 coming through. 2LG have a very full on version of this in their home with circles and arches of saturated color mixed with straight lines. This can be very 80s with reds, cobalt blues and neons or super 2020 with violets and limes maybe. Most of us wouldn't want to go that extreme, but you can use wallpaper, curtain fabric, rugs, artwork and cushions to introduce the look. And if you're on a budget, simply paint an arch on your wall in block colours. Our third trend is another that's been around for a while, but it's having a major 2020 update and that's botanicals. Dulux's colour of the year is Tranquil Dawn and it's a calm, restful colour that's inspired by nature and it works perfectly in living rooms. Little Green has launched an entire green paint range and Valspar has loads of shades in really affordable and very durable finishes. Green sofas are a wonderful statement, especially in velvet, but if you prefer to keep your furniture neutral, then layer in lots of plants instead. If you're feeling particularly bold, go for a striking botanical print from somewhere like Divine Savages, Cole & Son or Designers Guild. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty inspired now. It's time to get those paintbrushes out. Now, if you love a toasted sandwich, and if you don't, then what's wrong with you? You'll want to see how toasted sandwich makers from every budget performed in our test. Stick around for that rug giveaway. There's no better lunch on a cold winter's day than a toasted sandwich that's crispy on the outside and oozy in the middle. But which toasted sandwich maker should you choose when there are so many on the market? Well, we rounded up three from very different price points to put them to the test and see which one performs best and which one has the features that you need for your perfect toasty. So our expensive option is the Cuisine Art 2-in-1 Grill and Sandwich Maker. This comes with two sets of plates. So you can see we've got our toasty plates in, but it also comes with flat grill plates. You can use those for literally anything from uh, pork chops to steaks. So this one though retails $89.99 so you could say it's quite a lot if you are just going to use it for a toasty. In the centre we've got our Breville. This is one of their newer models so it's the Breville Deep Fill. It's got a Dura ceramic coating. Now apparently that means that it cooks much more quickly and it's much more easy to clean. Now this one retails about £30 on Amazon at the moment. Both of these two come with variable controls so if like me you like a really crispy toasty you can ramp them right up but you can also turn them down if you're one of those weird people who likes your anemic looking bread. At the budget end of the scale, we have got the Salter Deep Fill Sandwich Maker. Now, you can get this for just about £20 on Amazon at the moment. It has the same kind of plates as the others. They're meant to be non-stick. The only thing it doesn't have is you can't take the plates out of this one. So in terms of cleaning, you've got to wipe it in situ, which if you've got a particularly oozy filling, could be a little bit of a problem. So what I'm gonna do, possibly a bit of an unfair test, I'm gonna toast one toasty in each of them because I always find that if you do that, it doesn't cook quite as well as if you have two in them. So let's get them powered up, see how long they take to heat up, and then pop our toasties in. So we've turned them on, they're all fired up. Actually, the quickest to fire up was the Salter, then the Breville, and then the Cuisine Art. So let's get these toasties inside them. Now, they all go in slightly differently. So this one, you're meant to pop them in like that. So let's shut that down. We're gonna give them all four minutes. So the Salter says it can toast two sandwiches in that time. So, right, that one's locked in. Now the Breville, they go in the other way. So facing outwards like that. So let's pop it down and lock it in. And then this one, so this is the only one that's got a floating hinge. So that's to adjust when you put like a steak or something thicker into it. Oh, yep, yeah, press and lock. 
like I said, I love a crispy toasty, so I've turned the heat controls on these two up to full to see if we can get something really nice and toasty. Uh, this one doesn't have any variable, like, variable controls, but you wouldn't expect that for £20. So the extra functionality that you're really paying for is the ability to be able to grill stuff, but also the plates pop off and you can stick them in the dishwasher for the cuisine art, which is really useful. You've got the adjustable hinges for putting different depths of things in, and you've also got a little oil reservoir. So it's a healthy way of cooking. If you're grilling meat, you just pull out the little oil reservoir afterwards and you can dispose of all of that. So let's see how our four minute toasty challenge is going. Matt, how long we got to go? Okay, so we, that was, we've still got three minutes to go. So let's turn the camera off and come back in a minute. <laughs> My belly is rumbling, the four minutes are up. So let's take a look and see how they've done. So Salter, Mr. Breville and Cuisine Art. Now, the filling that we went for is beans and cheese, and the reason that we did that is we asked our lovely YouTube community what their favourite filling was, and that's what came out top. So, let's get them out and have a look. A really good tip, if you want to maintain the life of your toasty maker, however much you spend, do not use a knife on it. It ruins the non-stick coating. Similarly, don't put the plates in the dishwasher unless it says that you can like the cuisine art because that ruins the non-stick coating as well. And then you just have to get rid of them, basically. So, number one, our salter. So I think we can all agree that unfortunately that does look a little bit anemic, but let's cut it open. So yeah, it, it hasn't sealed them that well. Look, the edges are still coming apart. And to be honest, it's just like soft toast. It's not the best. Right, next one. So this is our Breville. Now that has created, look, a really nice little package. So nothing's coming out. Look, we can just cut straight along the fold in the middle, just like that. And then into the middle of the parcel. It's nice and oozy, it feels nice and crispy. I'll be happy eating that one, don't know about you. Right, and then our deluxe toasty over here. So this actually, the little plastic spatula comes with the cuisine art, which you would hope for the price. Oh, look at that. That's a perfect parcel, isn't it, that one? So again, really well sealed. Nice, look at that, I'm hardly having to cut it. It's just popped open. Nice little dividing line, and then, yeah, really nice. Little taste test. Mmm, delicious. So, now, we need to wrap this up quickly because I really want to tuck in. But if I was going to buy a toasted sandwich maker tomorrow, I would say go mid-budget. The bargain ones, they might seem like a steal, but that's not really a toasty, it's just some anemic bread. So I just would steer clear. I think it's worth paying that little bit more, maybe 30 to 40 pounds, something like this Breville here, although all of the brands do a mid-priced option. It's nice and crisp, it's well contained, you can pop the plates out for easy cleaning, and it also cooked really quickly, this one. If you are a keen chef and you know that you're going to be grilling meat, then this one undoubtedly made the best toasty, but personally, I couldn't justify paying nine pounds just for a toasty maker so if you'll use the other added functionality then it's definitely worth the investment otherwise stay like me nice and middle of the road now if you don't mind it's time for lunch We've come to the end of the show, so it's time for our latest competition. We've teamed up with Frith Rugs to give away four Lipper Shaggy Rugs. These measure 2.3 by 1.6 metres and they're worth £250 each. To be with a chance of winning, click on the top article at realhomes.com forward slash TV and answer this simple multiple choice question. What's the name of our tech expert? You've got until midnight on January the 30th to enter, so good luck. That's it for now, but join me in two weeks' time for advice on costing your extension, interior design trends for kitchens, and how to choose a pod coffee machine. In the meantime, head to realhomes.com forward slash TV for more on anything that we've mentioned in this show, and don't forget to pick up your copy of Real Homes magazine. Happy homemaking.